it's Tammy with Color Valley Cooks. Kind of looks weird and dark in here, don't it? Um, <laughs> it is pretty wild tonight. I just finished supper, so I'm a couple of minutes late. Got a friend on her way on her way over here. She's going to eat a little bit, take something home, and try the pie we made live tonight on Facebook. Um, I'm going to be posting that in a few minutes, hopefully, on YouTube. So let's get started on our Bible study tonight. Um, it is going to be um, in our, let's take a look at uh, a different book tonight. And that is, instead of in Jesus, our perfect hope, I think we're going to look into experiencing God day by day and see what he has to say for January the 15th. I mean, 16th. Today's the 16th, y'all. Already. Can you believe it? God's eternal perspective. It says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. It says, big assignments require big characters. God will give you a responsibility in proportion to the size of your character. <laughs> In Bible times, a person's name represented his character. To know someone's name was to know what the person was like. That's why God changed the name of some when he transformed their character. For example, the Lord wanted to bless all the nations of the earth through Abram. Yet Abram's character was too weak for such a great task. God said he would make Abram's name great so that he could make him a blessing to future generations. Then over the next 25 years, God developed Abraham's character to match the name he had given him. God sees your life from his eternal perspective. He will take whatever time is necessary to grow your character to match his assignment for you. If you have not received a divine commission lately, it may be that your character needs maturing. Are you impatient to begin your work before God has refined your character? Let's see. Let's read that again. Are you impatient to begin your work before God has refined your character? A small character will fail in a large responsibility every time. Do not be too hasty to get to the work. Character building can be long and painful. It took 25 years before God entrusted Abraham with his son Isaac and set in motion the establishment of the nation of Israel. Yet God was true to his word, and thousands of years later, people continue to be blessed by the account of Abraham's life and by his descendant, Jesus. How is God building your character? Do you sense he has a task for you that will require a far greater man or woman than you presently are? Will you yield to God as he works in your life to prepare you for your next assignment? Okay. That's very nice, and it's true, and it's true about Abraham. But I didn't write it, and I have to say that it reminds me of something, and that is we had a guy get up Sunday night to join the church. He made a point to tell everybody that he was ready to serve the Lord and that for years he had kind of held himself back because he kept, he kind of felt like the devil had been telling him that he just needed to get ready before he could serve or kind of like what this just said. And he said that had held him back over the years. And let me just say this. Um, even if we just read that, we're never ready. God, um, I know um, we're never good enough. And we're never ready. 
what we have to be is willing. Um, as long as we are willing to let God use us and step out of his way, he can use us. So the guy said that he, he never felt like he had, um, I'm pretty sure he said that he felt like he hadn't matured in the word enough. He just felt like he wasn't ready. Uh, but you know what? You're never going to get ready. Um, you're never really going to, in my opinion, God may be working on you. And you may not even be knowing it. But it's up to us to step aside and be willing because if we will just be willing, God will use us. So I'm not, I, even if this book is something I like, I have to say I'm not real crazy about what we read tonight. Um, not because I don't think God works on us and not because I don't think it took 25 years for, for God, somebody's coming in the door, my dogs are barking. Not because I don't think it took 25 years for uh, Abraham to be prepared to do what he was about to do. But my goodness, it's Abraham, for heaven's sakes. The guy in the Bible that had to lead the people. I mean, that, he was a big figure in the Bible. And so let's not think we've got to mature enough for 10 to 20 years before we can serve the Lord. We can serve the Lord today. Because in all reality, all God wants from us is for us to witness uh, and to worship him. I mean, that's what we're created for. And if we're willing to witness to other people and worship him and for heaven's sakes, pick up his word and listen to what he has to say to you, then he will use us and you would be surprised. I think if there were more people in this world truly willing to be used of God, there's no telling what we could do. So, um, with that in mind, don't step back. Don't feel like you're not ready. Always step up. You'll never be mature. You'll never be spiritually completely mature. You'll never know everything. So just step out there and work for the Lord. And not just work, but love the Lord. Love him enough to tell people how much you love him. Love him enough to tell people what he's done for you. That's all you got to do. Um, so we're going to say, I guess I'll read Jesus, Our Perfect Hope, because it's short. And then we're going to sign off and say our prayers. Let's see what Charles Stanley had to say for today. And I know these guys are nice and they're doing a good job. But I'm just not crazy about anything that tells us to wait. Uh because the harvest is plenty. You know, we shouldn't be waiting on anything. All right, as far as witnessing and serving the Lord. Okay, January the 16th, overcome. And all of these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Um, it says, there are experiences in our life that are extremely difficult to get over. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, the end of a career, failing health, or other circumstances, the impact can be devastating. We can be left feeling that our identity, worthy, and security, I mean, I'm sorry, we can be left feeling that our identity, our worth, our security have been undermined and even destroyed. Those difficulties can also rock our understanding of God to the core. We may try to move on, but really it takes everything we have just to exist. Our progress is strangled by the hurts of the past. Is this you? Are you unable to move forward because something that happened to because of something that happened to you? Certainly, there are losses that take time to heal. But you know when you're stuck, when you feel you'll never get over something. Don't just exist. There is more for you. Release your injury to the great physician. Forgive whomever God reveals as a source of bitterness, even if it is him, even if it's yourself. Not only will he help you get over your experience, but he will give you meaning in it. So allow Jesus to lead you to victory by submitting even your greatest hurts to him. It says, Lord, you know how painful this experience is, but I trust you will bring healing and uh, significance from it. 
okay? So let's say our prayers tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these men who pinned down these books. We also, more than anything, thank you for your word. For with your word, we have all the answers if we will just read it. Uh, will you be with each and every one of us? May you not let us think that we need to hold back or and help us to know that we will never be good enough to serve you. For we are earthly, sinful, natured people. And without you, we are lost and undone. But because you sent your son to die for us, and he lives in our hearts if we are born again, we can accomplish anything through you. We can worship you, and we can witness for you. And I pray that you would give us all the strength and courage to do just that. Be with those who are suffering from these losses or hurts in their lives. May they hand it to you and see that they're not the only person in this world. And there's a much bigger picture here. And they need to focus on others and not just themselves. If they take their um, mind off themselves, hopefully, they can concentrate on other people and your love for other people so that souls can be saved. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed, blessed night. We have church at 7.30. It's time for me to go clean up my kitchen and say goodbye to my friend. Y'all have a blessed night. Love ya. Bye.